Hey guys, it's me, Effing Controller, playing more Betrayal at Krondor, and we are on the outskirts of uh, Lamut here. And we've gotten some info about various kind of side quests to do. We have some info about a uh, the stolen rubies that may have, we have a lead that they might have some info in L'Oreal about them. And then there's also this um, Mac Mordain Cadal place where the dwarves are, and they seem to be having some trouble there. So we might check out both of those places. I actually am probably going to focus on getting to L'Oreal, and we're going to go from the south here along this route, because I don't feel like backtracking this way. So that's the plan for the time being. Um, I actually discovered something kind of interesting. Um, while I was fiddling around with the game off screen, why is that red? Actually, no, we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, when you go to your character status screen, you can right-click on the photo and you'll get info about the character's backstory. So, this is uh, Locklear's backstory. He's um, son of the Baron of Land's End. Locklear has achieved great notoriety while serving Arutha Condoin, Prince of Krondor. Decorated for his service at the battles of Armengar and Sethanon during the war known as the Great Rising, he is one of the most honored nobles at the court of Krondor and in many respects is considered an unofficial member of the royal family. In the ninth year of the reign of King Liam I, Locklear entered the service of a northern kingdom garrison to investigate reports of a conflict raging in the Northlands. Shortly after his arrival, the mili his military escort was attacked by Mordhell raiders, and Locklear found himself cut off from his companions. Later, upon seeing someone fleeing a Mordhell warrior, Locklear slew the aggressor, only to discover the man he had saved was in fact a Mordhell himself, Gorath of the Ardanian clan. Da -da -da. Let's read about Owen. More often than not, Owen Belfort, Bellafort has been a political embarrassment to his father, the Count of Tyburn. As a result, he is basically the Sarah Palin of the House of Tyburn. As a result, he has been given a degree of freedom even his elder brothers are envious of. Though his father keeps, or his father hopes, he will one day settle down enough to become a marriageable suitor for the daughter of the Duke of Yupper. Far craftier than he is often given credit for, Owen has a keen eye for detail and can often see patterns invisible to those around him. He is really good at doing magic eyes. Uh, all his life, Owen has dreamed of studying magic and on many occasions has set elaborate plots in motion to spend time with masters of the arcane crafts. He undertook his most recent, his most notable <laughs> endeavor when he was only 14 and vacationing in the city of Ran, having spent the previous summer needling the household staff about his father's accounts Owen discovered a means of redirecting a portion of his father's wealth and managed to hire a magical tutor for nearly seven months. That's not really that clever. That just sounds like embezzlement, but whatever. Finally, his father detected his activities and recalled him home to Tyburn. Thereafter, the Belfort household staff was ordered to strict silence while in Master Owen's presence. Gosh, heavy. So let's read about Gorath, who's really probably the most interesting of the three right now. Although he is an eligible claimant for the Mor Mordhull throne in Sar Sargoth, Gorath has never desired to meddle in the politics of the Northlands, but often he has had little choice. He has been, a notab he has no been notably vocal in his criticism of the leadership of Delicon, a Mordhell who distinguished himself during the Great Rising as one of Myrmandamus' <laughs> field generals, and later claimed the throne of Sar Sargoth for his own. Gorath himself has led an impressive military career, and during the Rift War, he directed one of the only Mordhell defensives to successfully withstand Sarani aggression. This aggression will not stand, man! As he beat back the invaders, thousands of Mordhell escaped their homes in the Green Heart Forest to the safety offered by the Northlands. Only starvation and superior Sarani numbers eventually drove Gorath and his tribe of the Ardanian to flee across the Great Northern Mountains to their waiting cousins. Okay. So Gorath has made some mighty powerful enemies, it would seem. What a shame. So, um... Let's go towards the south here, and there's actually something interesting on the outskirts here. These are just tombstones, and you'll remember the Undertaker. Oh, the Undertaker! My Undertaker will tombstone pile drive you, Hulk Hogan! Um, that there's sometimes some chicanery going on with these little tombstones here. This one's for Hyden Miller, a bone did him in. <laughs> a bone did him. Uh, we can dig graves now that we have a shovel. This is for Pargus Atacarper. His fish didn't get away. He's not much of a carper then. Clamontala Pecta, touched by flames for honor's sake. It sounds like she was burned at the stake. Um, stranger, his chest was opened by a Mordhell. Hmm. 
Why don't we dig that one up? Hmm. So we found a coffin with no body. Fascinating. Let's try some of the other ones. There's actually one right in front of us here. Roselle Lamutian. Or Lamutian. I don't know. His, her face was sweet and her hands could heal. I mean, really? That last name? Come on. Let's dig it up. Ah! So these are restoratives. We're going to take those. Thank you very much. And click on this one. Goldie Crow. In death, her face was that of a sovereign. <laughs> that one's just obvious. Thirteen sovereigns. Not bad. We'll take that. And click on that. Michelle Ambazak. As you are, I once was. As I am, you will be. Shall we dig up this grave? No. Generally, the rule is that if it doesn't really have any kind of pun in it, I guess, if it's not a silly tomb or tombstone, it's not going to uh, have any treasure in it. Like this one, if we dig it up, yeah. Covered with grime and grave mold, Owen distastefully flung back the heavy lid of the coffin to look at its contents. Immediately he retched. I think that's spelled wrong. As a thick ammonia scent billowed up from the coffin's corrupting remains. Just a body, he gagged. Oops. And see, like this one, probably nothing. We could dig it, I guess. You can dig it. Yeah, it's another body. Yuck. Um, we'll open this one up. It's got a note. Let's have Owen read it. Uh, let's left-click it. Please relay our thanks to the Six for the shipment of magical traps. The witch we have employed has been informed not to step between them. She has promised she shall test them at her leisure. Fantastic. Very good. We'll just put that back, because we have no use for it. Because um, we already know how those traps work. That's probably nothing. And I do believe that digging, uh, turning up graves like this, does take some time. So, we already opened that one, didn't we? Yeah, whatever. This one has something in it. And it's going to you! So you don't want to just dilly-dally and keep digging these, but... No, we're not going to dig that up. How about that? Let's dig that one up. Oop. Gross. All right. Well, I think that that's everything out of the graveyard there. Uh, let's continue on to the south. Vroom. And there's some trees here. Actually, we should probably go back towards the road. All right. There's another little path here. We can take a look at it. And there's a cave! My god! A sulfurous stench was in the wind. Oops, sorry guys! You know how that spicy Serrani food goes through me like a laser? Gross. This must be the MacMordain Kadal, Locklear said, his eyes glazing. Mmm. Yum. Glazed eyes. As he lost himself in thought, I knew that it was somewhere close, as I recall Mac is dwarven from mine or cave or something like that. Okay. Now, considering the dwarves are no friends of the Mordhel, they might be of some assistance to us, assuming they don't take exception to Korath here. Do we investigate or not? Well, this is the cave that we know has some kind of issues, but we'll take a look. The tunnels were damp. Though the silver-seamed earthen roof which stretched over their heads was tall enough that they didn't have to crouch, Locklear felt hemmed in by the shaft. <laughs> he was privately thankful the dwarves were larger than they were often given credit for in the legends. Which legends were those? Why don't you knock a little harder on the fourth wall? Good god. In your world, player, dwarves are considered tiny. However, in the world of Midkemia, dwarves are not. Bear that in mind as you continue your adventures. Whoa. Uh-oh. That sounds bad. Sparks rocketed down the corridor. Slamming Owen flat against the mineshaft walls, Locklear narrowly left for... Narrowly left for... for Christ. Locklear narrowly left for cover himself as something skidded along the rocky floor. Abruptly, the glowing cone of fire winked out of existence as it collided with an unseen wall. After several long heartbeats, the senor peeled himself away from the wall just in time to meet the gaze of a short tree stump of a man. Didn't you just get done telling us that they're not short? Well, they're not that sh Just splitting hairs here. It's ridiculous. Oh, another dwarf who looks strangely like Ben Stiller. Creepy. 
Now, um, Influx actually complimented me on my Scottish accent, which was, if I may say so, excellent. But I'm going to... Uh, he said that I sounded like Sean Connery, and I'm actually going to do a Sean Connery impression for Nader Bandock here. Bloody awful hammer, you'd best have a demon in your bones. What does that mean? You have to... You, <laughs> you have come to take a whack at killing the beastie, have you not? Beastie? Beastie boy's gonna let the bee... Mm, drop? Beastie, aye. Off a week ago, we heard something fierce obeying in the mine. Terrible cold, like. Of course, as a, a dwarf knows, the sound instant, the sound instant whether he's heard it before or not. Brackner. Curse of every old delver since first dwarves took up hammers. <laughs> Be careful when delving holes, kids. I've never heard of them. No one has in quite a while, laddie. There hasn't been a Brackner in the upper mines for well on since DeLong the Great laid claim to the Kingdom of the Isles. We thought we'd laid low a, the lot of them, but the kobolds are stirring them up on their quest. Kobolds? Your folk called them gnomes. Ah, oh, shit. Gnomes. They used to worship a dragon what lived down here. But when the dragon disappeared, they thought the dwarven folk ate him away. Every now and again, their leader fade here takes a notion to undertake a holy quest to find him. This time they must have woke up a clutch of Brackner. Now the Nur have collapsed the main passage and killed thirty of our kin. We've a reward for to whomever can do it in, if you're of, if you're of a mind and of the spirit, that is. Let me find more out about the Brackner. I'm not saying we're interested in killing a Brackner, but if we were looking for it, what would it be like? Off again your right and a, a made of stone, like living rock they are. From out their nostrils they breathe a green mist, but I'd be wary of getting too close to look, for they'll drop a boulder on your head sure enough. Sure enough? What? We've already had a few bravos which come in here to try a hand at killing the beastie. This use of the word beastie is most disconcerting. <laughs> but there's not much they've been able to do themselves beyond get themselves so mangled they needed the help of a temple. I'd be as wary of them as... I'd be as wary of them, though, as I would be of the beastie. <laughs> Fuck. They, none of them, want else but then to claim the gold that we've offered the creature Slayer. It's just impossible to read this sometimes. <laughs> the way things have been going for us recently, perhaps we could do well to seek a little help at the temples as well. Where are the closest ones? We dwarves don't much dawdle outside the grey towers of Stone Mountain, but as I can... Oh, for God's sakes. Well, I write you, personally, but... It's a matter of preference. There's a temple of Killian betwixt Zhun and Hawk's Hollow. I think there also might be a temple of Ishap here close, but I can't recall exact where that would be. The barkeeper at the Blue Wheel Inn at Lamut suggested you might be able to repair our armor. If we weren't digging ourselves out of this pretty mess, aye, we could do something for you, but we're all tied up to a man. <laughs> that man think about all this? <laughs> he must be quite a big man in more ways than one. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Pardon my saying, so, but we problems are a bit more pressing than dealing with dented armor. You might a try a hermit what lives near Ox Olo. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's gained something of a reputation for himself over the past few years. I'll bear that in mind. Pick George! <laughs> Oh no, this is getting increasingly silly. There was an option for swords, and it was Sean Connery, and everything happened, and I don't know what's going on. Okay, if you can't repair our armor, do you at least think you could do something about our swords? I hate to be difficult, but we're really in a crucial situation. What a, what a pissy way of saying it. This is a really crucial situation here. Locklear's from, like, Southern California or something. Are you deaf, laddie? <laughs> I told you before, we haven't the time to go repairing things at the moment. We're in a crucial situation ourselves, if you haven't noticed. We would be willing to pay you. I, speak for yourself, dude. We don't have that much money. I'm sure you would, just as sure as I know the dwarves below would be willing to pay to get out from under the rock. Welcome to the rock. If you're going to San Francisco, it's a question of time. Time! Bah! Look, if I show you a trick to sharpening your swords, swords, what the fuck is going on with this accent? <laughs> Will you promise not to be bothering anybody else in the mine? 
I think I can turn a handful of sovereigns to advantage in Lamotte and hire a few strong backs. You have my word of honor. That shall have to do. I'll teach you a quick a little quick a little about weapon crafting, but I'll expect a fee of fifty sovereigns for my trouble. Do we have a deal? Hell no. I didn't really have a lesson in mind at the moment. We'll see if we can't find someone else to sharpen our swords for us. Whatever you like, we both have things to do. Goodbye. Thank you for your time, Nadur. Nadur. I hope you can get things st straightened out down here. <laughs> we'll be fine. Shooters were through some of this rock and the Brack Nourish laid low. You kind of keep us down. Oh, for fuck's sake. I didn't think so. Perhaps we'll meet again. Yeah, we're not actually going to go try to kill the Brack Nur. He is pretty tough, and we're not that tough ourselves. Yes, let's leave. Okay, so we're back to the overworld after a very, very silly encounter with Sean Connery. Um, I'm going to go back into these trees here because I think I might have missed something. Possibly, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. There's a chest. Let's try to open it. Sweet, sweet sausage. And some armor and a torch, which would come in handy in the uh, the place that we were just in. <laughs> Durr. The MacMordane Cadal. And, well, there's nothing really back here, I guess. Huh. Oh, I take that back. Let's see if we can ambush him by nightfall. The light of the moon guide us towards him, towards our quarry. Oh, he caught us. Um, why don't we zap him? Blind him? Blinded by the light. Pew! It's just handy to have him lose a turn. Uh, put you here. Very good. And why don't we put you over here so he's pretty much out of reach. And poke. And poke. And defend. And we'll try a swing here. We can swing a swing. Oh, he's running away. Um, I wonder if we can do that to him again. Stop right there. dead. Alright, and there's his baddie. And we'll take your sovereigns, and we'll give you the sword and you the armor. Uh, how are we looking load-wise? Well, we sharpen this crap up a little. Sledgehammer! Bow, bow, I don't want to call my name! Bow, bow. Okay, that's quite enough of that, and what time is it? Well, it's evening time. Why don't we... I would like to find that temple, actually, so let's keep going to the south. We'll go through the trees here. Let's see if there's anything of interest. Nope. And there's a little plane here. I don't see anything. Yeah, we can keep going this way, I guess. Not a little aeroplane, just a plane. A grassy plane. Gorath stopped and stared off into the distance. After several seconds of contemplation, he turned and began to speak. Look at that tree over there. Look at that tree over there. The lower limbs have all been hacked off. <laughs> I don't know how Gorath suddenly got so folksy, but... That either means we're near someone's property line, or someone was ensuring they had an un unobstructed view of the area. If we continue in this direction, we should proceed with great caution. Hmm. Very astutely observed, Gorath. I think that that's a cue for us to save the game. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we'll press on. Ah! They were being watched. Unsure that where their observers were located, Mockley were wheeled about just as a figure emerged from behind the trees. Oh, there's two of them. That was slightly dishonest. Um, Owen is apparently out of magic juice, so we're going to have to fight these guys mano a mano, and he's already running away. I think I'm going to... Well, can I chase him with Owen? I can't. Oh, hey. Brilliant. 
think it must have just been because there was somebody right by him. Alright, Locklear, can you... no. You can't either. Well, shit. He might have to get away. Oh, wait, no, he, he won't get away. Yeah. Well, maybe. Stab! No! Can I do it again? His eyes are gonna, really gonna be despairing, let me tell you. Handsomely done, and why don't we despair his eyes, too? Despair right in the eyes! Oh! And... Let's just keep you on defense here. Defense chop! He was alive! What? Unsure whether it was skill or luck that had won them the fight, Locklear set aside his weapon, though he allowed his dead opponent a white wall... Of course he's alive. It wasn't really that close of a fight. We kind of blinded them with magic throughout the whole battle. It's not really tricky, but whatever. Um, we're going to give that crap to Owen. And we might actually have to go back to Lamut already because we've gotten all this loot. But are, are these rations any good? Yes. Let's split them. And you get that. Superlative. Superlative work, gentlemen.